Welcome to Electra Online, and here now we're going to talk about the crystalline structure of diamond. So diamond, all it is, of course, it's a very precious thing to most people, but what it really is, it's just carbon pushed together, pressed together under very high temperature and pressure. And just about everybody knows that diamond is a very, very strong substance. Matter of fact, diamond is used in industry to cut through steel and to grind down and bore it through steel and iron and so forth. And uh, the reason why diamond is such a strong bond or is such a strong material is because of its bonds, the way it's bonded together. So if you remember, uh, diamond forms a nice tetrahedral shape like this. I have something drawn on the board and of course the reason for that is the hybridization of the four electrons that are able to be hybridized. So we have the outermost layer of the electrons, the valence band of electrons. We have two in the 2s shell and two in the 2p shell. They get hybridized into a 4sp3 shape, which then allows it to uh, allows electrons to set up an arrangement where they're all exactly at the same distance from one another, uh, from one another, at an angle of 109.5 degrees, making this very nice tetrahedral shape. So why is it that when you put a bunch of these together, you form something that is really strong? Well, it turns out that they end up binding together in a very interesting way. What I try to do here is mix one of these structures like that, but notice if you take the, um, the tetrahedral shape of four carbon atoms and put it right at the top, notice then others come in and start bonding to the ones that are available. And then the ones in between notice that each of these tetrahedral shapes they merge together and start sharing these, these atoms in such a way that it starts locking into itself very, very strongly. So if another one comes along like this, these two get replaced by just a single set and then they start banding together like that ever so more and so the crystalline structure develops. That happens only under very high temperature and pressure and that's why diamonds are rel relatively rare because they're typically formed near volcanic areas where there's a lot of heat and a lot of pressure and volcanic activity brings them to the surface where people can find them. Of course, we've also figured out how to make them in the laboratory and some of the diamond producers, they're not very happy about that. Anyway, so the, uh, the, the concept then is the way the strict, uh, crystalline structure works is that you end up having these faces where a, a good diamond cutter can find these places and start cutting the diamonds in certain ways. So diamonds can be cut uh, very carefully along their faces. So when you understand the crystalline structure, you're actually able to shape diamonds uh, in, in certain shapes that way. But if you take a piece of diamond and you mount it on, let's say, the edge of a, a saw blade or you mount it at the front of a drill, uh, man, you can just go ahead and bore through metal, you can shave through metal, you can cut through metal. This stuff stays together tremendously. The bond strength of a crystalline structure of diamond like this is absolutely amazing, much, much stronger than just about anything that we know of. This is pretty well the hardest substance known to man. And that's why the reason again is this perfect tetrahedral shape, which can just in infinite ways reproduce itself into this crystalline structure that looks like that.